right, so I'm not sitting in my uh, in my bathroom in my studio right now, uh, but I wanted to make this video because I wanted to follow up and kind of finish the bathroom uh, Tadillac video that I that I put out recently. Um, so in that in that bathroom, I did a Tadillac shower system, which if you haven't seen, uh, I'll put a link in the bio so you can check it out. But in the bathroom, in order to make the whole thing look uniform, you know, like no grout lines and, and all one color, I decided to uh, lime plaster the walls with a, uh, with a coat of lime wash over the plaster to give it more texture and to micro cement the floor. Now, if you haven't seen my video on how to make lime wash uh, yourself, I also have that video for a deeper dive into lime wash. And I also have a kind of deeper dive into micro cement. But when I did my first micro cement video, uh, the first one I did, I learned a lot of things. There were some things that didn't go so well um, and some things that I really liked about it. So one of the things that didn't go so well, which I got a lot of comments on was, how does it hold up? So the short answer is it holds up great. It's a really strong uh, substance. But when I did my uh, other part of my office, I did it over plywood. So the plywood was four by eight sheets of plywood. So you can imagine that the joints where they were uh, butting up next to each other, when I micro cemented over that, I didn't tape the joints and I didn't, I, you know, I didn't float the joints. So the way that you would if you were doing like, you know, a backing for a tile or something. And, and so what happens is that after the micro cement cured and it hardened, as soon as I stepped on one board and it like moved, it cracked all along the line of the uh, four by eight sheet of plywood. So that was a bummer. It's not super noticeable, but like obviously if you're doing it, you don't want to see cracks in your floor. Um, and so, yeah, so that was a bummer. But on this project, I had a concrete slab, so there were no joints. It was all just one surface. So um, I was able to, uh, Put it down and I'll show you in the video and it's been holding up really well. So without further ado, let's get to uh, the process of lime plastering, lime washing and micro cement floor. Okay. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is float your drywall and by floating, I mean taping the joints. So I've taped the joints and now using joint compound to make them seamless. So the Tadillac system was already finished, so I wanted to preserve it and not drip anything on it. So I uh, taped it up and covered it so that way I could kind of have that peace of mind. And if you haven't seen the Tadillac video, I'll link it here. So one thing that people have asked a lot about is how do you prime for lime wash? Well, you prime for lime wash the same way that you prime for lime plaster, and that's to add grit to normal primer because you need the primer to be kind of coarse for it to hold on to. So this is basically adding like sand essentially to your primer. So I primed all of the walls in the bathroom and I went over it with two coats. And again, the, the primer now has the grit in it so that way the plaster has something to grip onto. And the same would go for lime wash. You would wanna have primer with grit in it so that way it has something to attach to. So to make the color pigmentation for my lime plaster, I used 100 grams of umber and 25 grams of flax. And that's to mix up a five gallon bucket of plaster. And this is all Lime Strong product that you can get on their website. So it's important to mix up the color pigmentation in water before you add any of the plaster. So I put my pigmentation in and you mix it for about two to three minutes. And I bought from their from Lime Strong's Lime Strong build website. Um, I bought their finish, their interior finish and you add a little bit of powder at a time, probably in quarters. So that way you can mix it up and you're not dealing with a huge cloud of powdery plaster. Also, one thing to make sure you do is to scrape the sides so that way you get all the dry, 
powder off of the sides of your bucket and into the actual mix. So for this, you're gonna need a hawk and a small taping knife to scoop the plaster onto the trowel. And I'm using a magic trowel, which as you know, if you've watched any of my other videos, is kind of a secret, uh, secret hidden gem. And so you can see kind of the thickness and the tackiness of the plaster here. It's a little bit thicker than peanut butter. It's not sliding around. Um, I found that that's a lot easier for application on the wall and it's not so runny. So when you apply, you're gonna wanna just cover the surface entirely. Uh, doesn't have to be crazy thick. I think mine was somewhere between maybe an eighth and a sixteenth of an inch. After you've covered your entire wall and it's dried, before it's completely dry, you should take a sponge float, which is this green thing, and get it a little wet with water, and then just go over any grooves or ridges or bumps or things that you don't love and smooth it out with water. It's like the best tool you can have because it smooths out any trowel lines or any bumps or anything like that. So next is the lime wash to go over the lime plaster. And you can watch my other video where I go in depth about how to make lime wash. And these are clips from that video. So basically when you're making lime wash, you know, you, you make the same color pigmentation essentially as you do for your, you want to do the same color pigmentation ratio for your lime wash as you do for your lime plaster. So it's the same color. Now the difference is that it's a smaller amount. So you divide it because you know, it's a smaller amount of material and you apply this just like you would any other lime wash, uh, system. You spread the paint out as far as it'll go. And again, if you want to learn more about this process, watch the other lime wash video or videos. I have multiple. Got to have your, uh, you know, your companion there to make sure you're not missing any spots. And for this, I, I think this is really important to know. I did the ceilings and I think that that makes the space feel much more cozy and, and warm and inviting. So now for micro cement, you're going to want to make sure that your surface on the floor is completely clean, no anything on it, because if there's anything bumpy or gravel or whatever, it will get caught up when you're troweling it on because it's a very thin layer that goes on. So you really need to make sure that it's a clean, smooth surface. Now again, for the micro cement, I did the exact same color ratio as a five gallon bucket of plaster because I wanted the colors to all match, right? So since the micro cement starts out white and the plaster starts out white, I figured the color pigmentation should translate and it did. So same color pigmentation as before, same process as before. Um, you wanna mix up the color first with water and then you add your material. So I'm using Surecrete here you can buy Surecrete online. I think I bought mine from a place called Concrete Exchange and uh, it's called the Microtech. So as it's mixing up, you can see it's a little bit thinner uh, cause you're gonna wanna be able to pour it on. So I actually, I went a little heavier with the water, so that way it was more pourable. You can see that it's kind of running much more than my plaster was. So I made sure to tape all the walls, so that way when I was applying the micro cement, it didn't spill over on my walls and leave any weird kind of like material crossover. And so with this, you pour it on and you can see it's a pretty thin, you know, kind of looks like a, a buffalo dropping. <laughs> if you've ever seen that, it, you know, you pour it in about, I don't know, like a seven to 10 inch diameter, and then you spread it on. And I used the magic trowel again, and you just slowly cover your surface. Now, the thing that you want to make sure to do is not to work yourself into a corner because you have to be able to get out of the room. So start in the furthest corner and work your way back towards your exit. And also, you know, don't, don't make it so that way you can't reach into an area. You want to be able to reach all of the corners and be able to spread it. So that way it fills in entirely. Now to seal the floor, I used uh, this penetrating sealer. This is what I started out using, 
but it actually didn't seal the floor that well. Um, so here, I'll, I'll put what I actually used uh, right here in the video. The process is the exact same in terms of you roll it on with a paint roller, but um, the actual material that I just showed you doesn't work as the image that's here on the screen. And once the uh, floor cures, you're good to go. So that was a process in my studio bathroom to uh, to get the, the shower system, the Tadillac, the walls and the floor to be one cohesive look and feel. Um, so if you want to learn more about micro cement, you can watch that other video uh, where I go into slightly more detail for the flooring. Um, and if you want to watch the Tadillac video to see how I did the actual shower system, you can watch that as well. Um, and lime wash, if you're feeling like, okay, how does this all, I have a couple of videos on lime washing on my channel. You should watch them. I go into detail, different details in each video. So have a look, hope you enjoy and, uh, I'll, I'll be uploading probably another video soon. All right, take care.